Dr. Susan Crockford is a zoologist. Uh, She has um, uh, been working on the history of Arctic animals. Uh, She is a uh, um, a polar bear biologist, uh, I believe. Is that right, Susan? Are you a polar bear biologist as well? Well, I'm 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 really a a general biologist and I've got a but I've got a special interest in polar bears for sure. Okay. First of all, when did you develop this special interest in polar bears? When 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 in your life did you go, I want to study polar bears? Well, it was really probably 20 years ago. I was really interested in the evolution of polar bears and you know like what it, where did they come from and and how how did uh how did they actually come to be as a separate species and so since that time i've been um looking at the literature on polar bears and it, you know it, reading it all and examining it in detail okay so that's how i got here all right so the the catastrophic global warming stuff they have been telling us for years we're killing all of the polar bears because the uh, the ice caps are melting, and you point out that uh, the ice caps have melted to 2050 levels in the summer, and yet the bears don't seem to be decreasing. Exactly, and that was and that was really what the the whole hype was about around the turn of of this century, like around the year 2000. Um, you had polar bears really elevated to this icon of global warming, and they were, you know, the epitome of what um, humans were um, doing wrong in destroying the planet and all of that. And then uh, in 2008, when polar bears were listed um, in the U.S. as uh, being threatened with extinction, um, in fact, by 2007, the summer ice levels had already dropped to the levels that they had predicted wouldn't happen until the middle of the century. Now, the middle of the century was when they said that two-thirds of all the bears were going to disappear because of the lack of ice. And in fact, since 2007, although there's been a little bit of up and down, that those levels, summer sea ice levels, have stayed at that um, mid-century level ever since, and yet polar bear numbers have actually increased. And to the point to where, I mean, polar bears, people don't realize polar bears are nasty animals. They will eat you. <laughs> exactly. And, and we saw this just uh, last summer where there were two fatal attacks within two months um, in Canada on western Hudson Bay. And um, it really has um, residents of the Arctic um, very nervous about um, the potential for what um, a really thriving population of polar bears really means for people who actually have to live and work there year round. So this is this is an amazing thing because it, you know it's it's like the people who go big game hunting, and you know you, you they'll take a picture with a lion, and everybody will be all up in arms about the lion. Except for the people in the community. They're like, no, lions eat us. And yeah. We need to keep their population under control. Um, it's, not that, it's not that these people uh, hate polar bears or want to wipe out all polar bears. They just need control of the population because they are, they're everywhere. They're around the garbage dump. They're around uh, you know, uh, stores or any place where there's lots of garbage or food, correct? Exactly. However, what what you have to remember is that these the two attacks that happened last summer actually occurred away from communities, and mm. there were no attractants involved. Those though, both of those attacks were purely predatory attacks, where the bears came after those people with the intent to eat them. 